nice and bright.
minutes. We'll move to the second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. And so now we'll take item 8D. Yeah, I just had a quick <coughs> question. Uh, I was looking at the laundry list of um, items that we want to do here in the, in the headquarters office. First of all, I didn't realize that uh, it had been that long since the building was built at the time of life. So I'm not surprised at what you want. My only concern is, is uh, to offer an opinion, a paint and carpet remodel can grow before your very eyes, and I'm hoping that. that. <laughs> I, I, I think the 200,000 is maybe even a tad low. I'm just, I, I, should, I, I read where you have quotes from vendors, but then you added the three gates that you want to do modifications to upgrades. Uh, are you sure you have enough money? So, so the gates, depending on how it works out and how much retrofit work is done, that could make the number a little higher, but but we believe we're okay with that for now. We might need to check in with you uh, in a year, but we think we're good for expenditures for next year. And that, that said, we've talked about having a lim limited program at this point in time. There is some work that needs to be done in this building. I think we've all expressed different opinions, but that's gonna be part of a larger plan. Even some of the area we're working on out in the lobby, that was really just to kind of spruce up the living room uh, but there's some work that confused yeah, no, it, It's sorely needed, and, and the amount of money in Sacred Matter budget is almost inconsequential. I think. Uh, just want to make sure you got it. Hearing that, I'll move to approval. I would be happy. Okay, moved and seconded. All those in favor of item 8B? Aye. 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 Okay, opposed? No. That carries unanimous. Thank you. And now we'll move on to item 9A, <coughs> review and discuss drought management. President Howard, 9A is our standing item to allow the public chairman to comment on any matter related to the drought. Uh, only different item in here is, I put a note on the bottom to propose maybe dropping this <coughs> on an ongoing basis. We haven't had too much comment. We will still come before you uh, once a month with an update on the drill where we could handle conversation. So, uh, yeah, I would think that's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so that we can just move on to 9B. So, item 9B is our update on the, if you will, the state of the drought. Uh, just some highlights from within the precipitation is 118% of normal, 66% for the year. Snowpack 113% of normal as of point in time, 74% of the season. And the reservoir, I'm going to try and pull up the chart that we use. And you can see the rains in January made some nice improvement here in this blue line running up, uh, uh, moving up. But that red line you see going across. That's the drought from 76, 77. So before we get comfortable that we're there, uh, we just crossed that. And I've heard comment that there's 30% more people in the state since 76, 77. So that said, uh, it's been close to 80 the last two days. And we've had no measurable rain uh, for February. So maybe the governor is clairvoyant. Uh, but I think, you know, there's really no change in the report at this point in time. Uh, because you're going to take action on the drought emergency of the next item, at this point it's just accepting the emergency. If there's any detailed questions, please ask them. So the governor has extended through October 31st. So all the prohibitions that we'll have through the water, from the governor through the water board are still attached to it. Yeah, there's some leeway that we'll get into some of the uh, restrictions on it. There's a little more leeway. And we're looking at percentages uh, that might be adjusted. Right. So we'll other than that, we'll move these up to the board. Second. The move is second. To accept the report, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we'll move on to 
9C. That is a state of emergency, and thank you for the segue. The governor did issue his order extending through October 31st, and I think that based with the underwhelming amount of rainfall really this past month keeps us in a place where I don't really think there's anything but to continue to throw out emergency and recommend that we continue it through October 31st to coincide with the governor's uh, extension of the state. Any update on what the water board decided or second day next time? I know they're running away on, on regulations. It will be in the next time. Got it. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions on the night Follow the governor. I uh, yeah. move yeah. approval of the uh, item as presented. We extended the drop from your emergency through October 31st, 2016. And we send the resolution 2715. Thank you. And we send that resolution. Thank you. <laughs> and it's been moved and said. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. None. Now the 9D. All right. Thank you, President Howard, members of the board. Uh, uh, I have a PowerPoint for you tonight take a quick look at that will run us through the changes that we're recommending in our drought action plan and of course that also includes the water use restrictions and our we have an our, our enforcement ordinance and rebates and all that kind of good stuff so um, one of the proposed changes that we're recommending is that we change our limitation for irrigation from two days a week which we had last year to three days a week this coming year and that would be a year-round limit for irrigation. One of the reasons we're able to do that is that on February 2nd, the State Water Board adopted new water use restrictions that will be effective through the end of October. And now they've added a little bit of language to say that their standard restriction for irrigation will be two days a week, or if we're able to reduce potable water use that comes from imported sources by 25% for the months of June 2015 through uh, October of 2016 compared to the same amount used during 2013 then we can set whatever number of days below the limit that we feel is reasonable. Uh, John and I talked and from the modeling that uh, John had done uh, previously we think that we should be easily able to achieve 25 percent conservation even with three days of irrigation. So this would actually I guess in a way recognize how much recycling we do and we're already reducing our portable use by a tremendous amount by a recycled water program. So this will uh, in a way allow our customers to benefit a little bit anyway for this coming summer by allowing a little bit more irrigation at home. Hopefully we'll be able to keep trees and things like that alive a little bit better with three days as compared to two. Um, we are also recommending that we retain the existing limit right now that we put on residential customers of 4,480 gallons per week. Um, and that is an, a limitation that we are easily able to enforce with Aquahawk. We have the data and we can look at that on a running basis. Um, we're also suggesting proposing some changes to our restrictions uh, with pools and spas. And as you know, we've had a number of restrictions on pools and spas for the last two years. We're suggesting that we remove the prohibition on filling new pools and spas, and also to remove the general prohibition on draining and refilling existing pools and spas. Uh, there are a number of reasons for this, one being that pools primarily have generated the most of our uh, exemption activity and waivers, um, which generates a lot of work for staff. Um, we're also uh, strain in our abilities to enforce those regulations because it's very difficult to keep track of pools and spas, especially when a lot of pools are not even visible from the street, um, and it's very tough to be able to go and do an inspection of those facilities. Um, and we also believe that pools and spas are not the primary uh, or, or not a very significant loss of water, if you will. We, we see more losses of water from leaks and over irrigation and that's where we focused a lot of our enforcement activity uh, for the past two years. Um, we're also recommending that we remove, we 
remove the requirement that all pools and spas be covered. This is a particularly difficult uh, limitation to enforce. Um, uh, it's difficult for the large pool owners because they normally would have their pools open till let's say 10 o'clock at night in an apartment complex or a condo complex and they don't have staff around at night to cover the pool and then to uncover it in the morning um, and that's been a, a, a continual issue that we've had with several of our customers um, we're also suggesting that we prohibit draining and refilling pools and spas as a substitute for doing normal chemical treatment and maintenance that's just prevent water wasting, if you will. For our enforcement program, we think our enforcement program is pretty good the way it is. We're not recommending any changes going forward, so we can keep our enforcement program without any uh, changes at all. Um, our conservation rebate program, we're proposing a budget of $20,000 for rebates from March 1st through October 31st. We think that should keep that program fairly well budgeted uh, for rebates um, and that rebate program is already written up so that it will end when that amount of money is spent or unless the board approves an increase to that budget so when the 20,000 is gone rebates stop unless you approve an increase and that rebate program right now includes our course uh, high efficiency toilets and urinals clothes washers pool and spa covers smart irrigation controllers and lawn replacement For public outreach, we, we are not proposing any budgeted expenditures for media, um, and that would be paying for newspaper, TV, radio, those kind of things. Um, we do have $10,000 budgeted for doing direct mailings to our customers, particularly if we change our water use restrictions, we'll probably do a bill stuffer uh, that we would send to each customer to explain to them what this year's restrictions would be. Um, and we have about $3,000 budgeted for the yard signs as well as truck magnets and banners and things. You, I'm sure you all realize how popular the yard signs were last year for recycled water use and what have you. And we'll continue to do staff presentations to city councils and large customers, HOAs, community groups like Blue Lions and the Rotary. Uh, we'll still do those kind of things. Um, conservation assistance, we have provided conservation assistance in a couple of different ways. We have $5,000 budgeted this year for doing large landscape audits, uh, $2,000 in the budget for purchasing water conservation devices that we give away, and those are low flow shower heads and faucet aerators, uh, toilet test kits and things like that. And uh, we'll also keep $1,000 in the budget for our landscape contractor assistance for customers that have trouble or just don't have an idea what to do with that crazy timer that's out there controlling their irrigation. And sometimes those customers have minor problems and we've used our landscape contractor to fix minor problems. They, they will not replace an old and aging irrigation system, but if there's a broken sprinkler head, they'll fix it, take care of the problem. And the customers have been very happy with it. Um, okay, we also have in, in the proposed budget $10,000 to retrofit some potable irrigation sites to use recycled water and we do have a couple of sites along the new West Dublin pipeline that we might be able to use this money for to hook up that aren't already on recycled water and then there's five thousand dollars in there to do backflow and cross connection testing in conjunction with those conversions to recycled water. Uh, our recycled water fill station, the budget that we have for you tonight to see uh, proposes keeping the fill station open at the wastewater plant through the at least the end of October uh, with similar hours to what we did last year and then we're proposing to open the Dublin Boulevard fill station three days a week from June 1st to the end of September. Uh, and we'll actually have more for you to discuss on this at our next board meeting. Uh, we've got, Dan uh, McIntyre has been working on uh, some ideas and options for you to talk about and consider at the next meeting. So we'll, we'll revisit this issue uh, next time. And as far as diversifying water sources, I think like we've talked about, East May Bud right now is unable to help us with any kind of water transfer for this year because of the condition of their water supply. They're going to be using the Freeport intake for 100% uh, of its capacity for their own customers. 
But we do have a CIP project that we are working on right now to upgrade a couple of our inner sides with these three months so that they would be ready to go for more long-term use. And we're gonna, gonna continue to work with Zone 7 and encourage them to diversify their water sources. So with that, I'm ready to answer any questions, Mike. Do you have any questions? We do have a speaker who would like to speak, but do you have any questions before that? Not through the speaker. That's through the speaker. Judy, hear your comments. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm Judy Maher. I'm the president of the California Highlands of Dublin Association up in West Dublin. Um, and I'm here in reference to the pool cover regulation uh, that was implemented last year. Um, we are one of the lucky associations, as Dan says, that um, you can see our pool from the road, so um, we have a pool cover. Um, and unfortunately, we don't have staff on site that can take covers off and put them on. What we've had to do is actually hire an outside company to do this, which, as you can imagine, gets very costly when you have to do it seven days a week. Um, and that has completely um, impacted our budget um, to a negative to the point where that we feel if this continues going into next year as a board, we're going to have to raise our dues to the HOA, which I don't think is fair uh, given the fact that, um, again, uh, Dan is a very good advocate, that the policy is really hard to enforce district-wide. Um, our board members went out and they did a survey on a number of pools and I can guarantee you 90% of them did not have pool covers on when they were closed. Um, we have been very diligent in making sure that we have done that. Um, and also conservation-wise for us on um, the California Highlands, because we have a lot of growth. We're in a canyon area, we have lots of trees, and so our irrigation, our landscape is our biggest item in our budget, basically. Um, so what we've done in hopes of conserving even more is we've gone to um, a computerized wireless uh, monitoring system that our landscaping company can do. Um, they can monitor for leaks, you know, wirelessly, you know, from their office. Um, in fact, that helped us. We just had a major leak out there. Um, they were able to identify it right away and, and stop the flow. Um, we've also, every time we um, change it, if we have a plant to die or whatever, we change it to drop tolerant. Um, all of the grass up front has been replaced with the synthetic grass. Um, that we're doing. We've replaced areas with cobblestone. So we're, we're trying to conserve as much as possible, um, but we don't want to be punished, um, you know, unequally because some HOAs aren't being enforced with the pool cover, and we are. And now it's me as a president have to go to my constituents and say, we're going to have to raise your dues, and it's not fair because they all know that there's other HOAs that aren't doing it. Um, so I I'm glad to see it up there, that it's up for discussion. I really appreciate it. Um, it is one of those hard to enforce, you know, unfunded mandates. I'm sure it would take Dan a lot more resources to go out and enforce it equally across the district. Um, and I don't want that either, because I don't want my water rates to go up. Um, so I appreciate your time, and um, I look forward to your vote. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Any uh, discussion? I, uh, I'm one of the, I think I'm probably the only member of the board that has a pool. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, pool covers are a pain in the neck. I will continue to use mine. Being on this board, it's kind of like I should. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, you know, it is hard. Especially for a commercial type of yeah. 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 yeah, it's it's very difficult to enforce. You know, it's, I have grandkids that take care of mine when they want to swim, so it's no problem. Are they available? <laughs> <laughs> well, they only do it when they want to swim. <laughs> but anyway, I, yeah, I, I agree that it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very difficult to enforce. And as far as refilling pools, you know, this pool that I've had since 1978, I believe it was, the water's only been drained once in that whole time, and that was to resurface. People don't dump water in out of pools. Not One would hope. <laughs> yeah, not for the heck of it. You do in Minnesota because it'll freeze, but not here. And they do up at top, but not here. So, yeah, water lasts forever. Uh, so I, I support the change of the pools. Well, we'll find out. Um, there were 
all still within the the, uh, the boundaries of the state, right? right. Which is you know, kind of the honor ridge, what we can't do. Right. Right. Awesome. And there's actually a copy of the state. Um, yeah, I see it. It's been right. adopted. The first copy here. My eyes are what they used to be. I mean, the one that's different, and Dan Mack brought up the differentials, the three-day watering, could be at odds with the surrounding communities. Well, they've been at odds with us before, so we could do the other one. <laughs> 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 well, I'm just going to mention, um, when we do the outreach uh, in our brochures, mail stuffers, I would say, you know, we do let them know that the pool covers are no longer required, but they're still encouraged. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'll still have the rebate program for right. those people that want to buy them. Right. So, yeah. Like, yeah, just don't encourage. So. And didn't we establish somewhere along the line that, that they really don't lose that much? In well, they do. They, you know, pools. My personal experience, a pool uses about the same amount of water as long of the same square foot, mm -hmm. you know, roughly. And the pool cover saves about 80% of it. They are very effective, but they are a pain in the neck. It's hard to keep the pool clean. So, yeah. Anyway. Take a motion. Yeah, I, I'll move that we endorse the updated drought response action plan for 2016 as presented. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? No. Carried. Would it be possible for our friends out there to be able to, I see this takes effect March 1st. Well, actually, what we'll be doing is we'll be bringing back uh, a revised ordinance, of water use restrictions for you to approve uh, on March 1st. And we'll repeal the old one and, and put in place the new one. But it'll reflect the changes that we've talked about today. But it's it's February 12th if our friends let the cover up. They're not going to get themselves in trouble, are they? I think they would be just fine. We'll leave it on. I'm happy with the vote. And I will. <laughs> your contract play runs at the end of the month anyway. Yeah, so okay. <laughs> yeah we're not going to save any money. So. <laughs> I have a question for Dan. It's, it's sort of off the topic, but I've been asked two or three times, do you have any idea when the line along San Ramon Road is going to be done? <laughs> hey, this is that path, like, so much. Yeah, the city's trying to get their project finished up. I haven't heard an update. I think they're supposed to be done fairly soon, though. Uh, the recycled water pipeline is charged and, done. and working now. Oh, we're it's a city. city. Yeah, we're it's done. A, it's a city. It's a city. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a it's a okay, then I'll refer them to the city. Oh, yeah, there you go. It's very similar. Okay. So we're charged? Are people going to irrigate now, or is the word of the place? Yes. Yeah. And Sam Ravens was running it the other day. Shannon Park is uh, going to be hooked up uh, very soon. Uh, and then I want to say Dublin L is probably going to be the last one that gets hooked up. They're doing a lot of work on their landscaping. Right. In the rack anyway, so right. They need a bunch of 50-year-old pipes, too, <laughs> at least. It's a mess, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good. It's, it'll take a little bit of work. And that's right. why they're going to be probably the last ones that actually switch over. Yeah, all right. Okay, so I guess we're ready to move on to 90. Okay, 90. I'm in the budget. So this is paying for it. Uh, we're seeking an adjustment, budget adjustment of 145,000, which excuse me, is the same amount as last year, remember, which is the appropriate level for stage one. Stage one and stage two are actually the same amount. Uh, this will cover the period from March 1 through October 31st, two fiscal years, and the wording in there will allow us to roll over money that's unused at the end of June into next year, so that we can cover. It's not 145 each fiscal year, it's 145,000 in total. Let's biggest item is still so all I ask is, you know, for as long as we're on stage one and we're concerned about like stage two and a half, you know, we're, it's, you know, we're concerned about like you know, stage two and a half levels or stage one rates, just keep an eye on that. Oh, <laughs> <I> <laughs> if you look at the financial statement, look, 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 
Where? She was right on the target. So, <laughs> yes. But I'm going to do an update when we get to six full months. So I'll come in here and take a look and report back. It's just really easy to have the position. All right. Um, I'll do approval for this. We need to pay for this stuff because it's passed. Oh, second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Carries. Move on to 9F. Uh, water master plan. Yes. Uh, so the work continues on finalizing the water master plan and the water capacity reserve fee update. The schedule is to present these documents to the development community next month and then to bring them to the board for final approval in late April or early May. Uh, there are a couple of assumptions, though, in our draft report that we'd like to run past the Finance and Personnel Committee before the developers are formally presented uh, what the report's going to be. Uh, and per, new, per uh, board pra current practice, items that are referred to the committee need to be done by the board. So staff is requesting that a uh, Finance Personnel Committee be set up. One possible date that might work would be uh, late afternoon uh, early evening prior to the next board meeting on March 1st, if that was acceptable. <coughs> that is myself and Director of Michelle Office. Uh, I'm out of town on the 20th through the 27th. So on Monday I can do it. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so we're, we're done with it. Oh, we're talking about the night of the board meeting, potentially, like... No, the board meeting is on March 1st, which is a Tuesday. Right. So I can do it on Monday. Oh, okay. If Rich can Monday the 29th. Um, is this going to be noticed to them or is this going to be, well, I mean, it's all public being noticed, huh? It'll be publicly noticed. We generally noticed. With letters or just kind of noticed? All right. Just so we get one, one bite of the sample before on the door. Okay, all right. Yes. <laughs> well, as David mentioned, we're talking about assumptions that are used in the final calculations. We're not quite ready. We have a meeting last mm -hmm. week and we made some good progress. So, does that 530 work? Yeah. Yeah, I get from the board. Is that okay with that? We want you to take the board. Sure. Sure. Okay. Yeah. And this does <coughs> not require any action. So, move on to the next one. Uh, let's see, item 9G to specify Valley Water Policy Roundtable. Okay, this is late breaking news. So uh, six uh, Tri-Valley Water Policy Roundtables have now been held. The most recent was last Thursday. As you recall, the design of the roundtable process is for the elected officials themselves to kind of set the parameters and issues that are to be uh, discussed. So at Thursday's meeting, three main items were discussed. First, there was a briefing from Zone 7 staff on the water supply evaluation. We reported on the contents of the water supply evaluation at an earlier board meeting. The key takeaway, uh, the key point of significance for us is that um, per previous discussion, the Zone 7 uh, water supply evaluation looks at eight different scenarios, which is a lot more than they did five years ago when they looked at one. So they looked at eight this time around. And in two of the eight scenarios, um, where the Delta situation is deteriorating, there's a delay in the, in the implementation of the California water fix, uh, the zone would not be able to meet their water reliability criteria without uh, some supplemental water sources, such as a regional desal project or uh, indirect over reuse. The state water project uh, can't provide that uh, reliability in two of the eight scenarios. The second of the three topics that was discussed at the roundtable was a presentation of community survey results regarding the community sentiments about uh, potable reuse of wastewater. And this was actually a survey that was suggested by the elected officials themselves at the last water policy roundtable meeting last July. So this wasn't something that staff had suggested. But before uh, kind of taking the plunge on this, the elected officials had requested a survey. So there were about 600 Tri-Valley residents that were surveyed. And the news is very good. 63% uh, of the residents in the Tri-Valley support indirect potable reuse. There's about 32% that are opposed. Uh, regarding direct potable reuse, so this is groundwater injection or storage in a lake. This is directly taking advanced um, uh, purified water and feeding directly into the potable system. A smaller level of support for that. Only about 37% of the Tri-Valley community supports that idea. There seems to be comfort with an environmental buffer 
in, in the process consistent with uh, our earlier groundwater injection project from back in the late uh, 90s. Um, the pollster also checked uh, arguments in support of the measure and arguments in opposition to the measure, and those generally balanced each other out. So positive arguments, educational arguments, tended to boost the numbers about 10%, uh, but then negative arguments of um, toilet to tap, uh, lack of confidence in technology, brought the numbers back to kind of where we started at. So there's some interesting issues there. The support for indirect flowable reuse is consistent across the valley. All of the communities support it to about the same degree. It's not like some communities support more and some less. Uh, and the survey also shows that the water agencies have enormous credibility on water quality issues with the public. The, the public has a lot of confidence in the messages from uh, the water retailers and wholesaler about the quality of the water they provide and are trustworthy in receiving the information. So the, the thought was, if in a public education campaign the agencies were speaking in favor of an uh, indirect global use project, that the word of the agencies would be uh, believable, credible. The third issue that was discussed was next steps. Where do we go from here? Now we're into six water policy roundtable meetings, and we've received a lot of information, and where should we go? So of the six agencies there, there were 11 um, elected officials from the six agencies, and those officials unanimously uh, adopted some suggestions, and those were that the agency should collaborate on a joint feasibility study of indirect potable reuse over the next 12 to 18 months. So this act looks at actual uh, project concepts in detail, looks at perhaps uh, permitting issues, financing issues, grant opportunities, uh, locations of technology, what technology might be used. It's almost um, an initial step in a preliminary design of a project, so it's significant. The study would take about 12 to 18 months and cost somewhere in the neighborhood of $500,000 the staff will have to work on a, uh, on a detailed scope of work and get detailed pricing on that. The committee also unanimously said we should not discuss or, or assess or study direct political reuse at this time because of the lack of support by the community. And they also said that we should begin a community outreach and education uh, strategy and that that should proceed concurrently with the joint feasibility study. Uh, the individual boards and councils will need to agree to participate in the recommendations. It requires uh, kind of a policy acceptance of exploring that idea. It requires staff resources and, of course, financial uh, assistance uh, or contribution for the consulting work that will need to be done. Um, so that's kind of the results from the last meeting, very promising, and there will be some additional water policy roundtables at the request of the elected officials themselves. We'll have a chance to kind of do a check-in and get updates on how this uh, joint feasibility study proceeds. So staffs will be able to answer any questions. Observations? Sure. I'll be glad to hear James joining them too. All right. Um, as always, Dan summarized everything very well, so I don't cover all that. Um, the report is very good. You guys saw the report. It was presented here. It was very interesting because I was prepared to bring out semi-sharp knives and the other council members got you know they they jumped on the 427 dollar water fix water which was, was really as a 427 dollar water fix water right away so they were able to start the ball rolling um, and we asked a fair number of probing questions that got to the heart of i, I think that you know, maybe there's some more work to be done on on how we're going to attack this problem probably why um, one and, and, there were, and by the time we got done with that process, it made the IPR discussion a lot easier because I think people realize that there's a place in the pie. There's, there's a place in the portfolio for seven, eight thousand acre feet of indirect public water. Just to put that into a perspective, um, I got bored, so I was doing some work on a chart that was in the packet. And we had to cut, the year before the state stepped in and made us do it, so the year that we had to do it by ourselves, we had to cut 15,000 acre feet of water as a valley. So if that project was in place, we would not have had the 25% mandatory reduction. We would have had, you know, 15%, maybe even voluntary. Mm -hmm. You know, that 7 to 8,000 acre feet of water really matters. And I know I'm preaching to people who believe it, but um, one note, and do it gently, is none of the portfolios as presented um, meet our policy. 
And so they're coming a long way. They're exploring some really interesting ideas on how to diversify the water supply in the valley, but none of them go as far as we've gone yet. Now, ours is a paper policy, and we may have to admit it to reality at some point, but you know, we have an end point that, that, that nobody's there yet. Um, the, the survey results are very positive, more positive than I expected, and probably more positive than Georgine, because she lived through that before. Um, and then one last thing from this county knows us politically uh, when we started to discuss the IPR. Everybody said yes, all the electeds in the room said yes, but the, 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 the log was rolling. Um, it would have been difficult to say no. But Pleasanton and DSRSD, the, the west side of the valley, appears to be very well aligned um, through this whole process. Probably from the second meeting on, they, we've, we've really, um, through their city manager and their, and their, and, and their electeds, I think we have strong land on the west side, not worried about Pleasanton getting all the way. Um, Livermore's going to come around. The city, who is the city, uh, who is the city council member who's not Rashad? Uh, Bob Warner. Bob Warner asked some very probing questions. And Marshawn started to talk in terms of details instead of blocking. You know, so you know, he's you know, so they're basing it along. The zone, the elected seem to be softening. I think you know they're they're getting there. Um, staff still seem from body language pretty resistant to change. But you know, that, that's just the way it is. Um, I'd be glad to come back in four months. This is my last thing I'll say is is that gives us a chance to come back and count noses on who actually passes a resolution and writes a check. Because within four months, all four of the bodies should be able to pass a resolution and write a check. And if they don't, there'll be some public, that would be an interesting meeting if, if, if better make sure they know, if you're kind of the, the keeper of that agenda, at least from our perspective, you know, that should be prominent on the on the agenda. This is a report back from each of the entities on how they're doing on the study. Uh, I expect to uh, have success. I think uh, people will step up and, uh, and study this. I don't see a problem with that. So I, I'm, I'm, prob I'm probably premature, but Ten years and we'll have an IPR system as well? Can we eight? Um, we're going to push to go faster. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Six. I'll, I'll go nice six. Try. I, I, <laughs> I think, I think uh, ten years is is very realistic. I mean, I'd be shocked if we weren't there in ten years. And and on the you know optimistic side, we could be there in five. Sorry for giant <laughs> No, I just... Uh, you're having fun with your friends up there, too, Yes. <laughs> Georgian keeps the little more people in mind. We strategically sit around the room to keep our constituents. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I was sitting with Carla and um, Kathy and uh, Sarah, so <laughs> we chit-chatted a little bit. But I was really... A couple of comments just taking away from the meeting. I was somewhat shocked that Livermore did not put up more of a fight with the indirect, um, given where they were 15 years ago and given who one of the votes is. Um, he seemed to quiet down because I spoke up when we started to vote on, well, we shook our heads on whether or not we would encourage or vote for a study to study indirect and I said yeah, it seems to me that's the thing to do because we don't want to taint it with the result we got on direct and about that time I looked over at John and it looked like he was going to argue with me and then he realized that basically I just agreed with him <laughs> so uh, yeah it was it was an interesting meeting but I think everybody's into um, the indirect or Sal or almost anything. They they continue to believe, Zone 7 continues to believe that part of the fix has to be the Delta fix. And as near, I think you said, the, the, as near as the price we could get, it would be $470 more an acre foot on what we're paying now. So that's a significant um, rate increase to cover that. Now, all the other things have price tags too, but, but that one will be there in addition to, so, you know, I still believe that it's never going to happen. Um, maybe it will, I don't really know. But we, I think we finally convinced the zone that they better start thinking that maybe it won't happen and at least have something in reserve, another supply in reserve, which is a big stretch from where they've been. So I, I was pleased with the meeting. 
I'm just glad that we've got Dan and the two of you on that committee because <laughs> leading the charge of this is, and again, you know, looking back at the history of where we were 15, 20 years ago, yes. even 10 years ago, uh, it's nice to hear. I was going to ask that question about uh, what your best guess as to when you did the study started because, as you know, in public works agencies, Initiating the study, getting it funded, and getting the study done. What always infuriates the private sector. We just can't believe it takes so long. <laughs> so I like to think, just keep pushing, keep pushing. Tri-Valley, if we, if we find more local 
water sources to augment and take less from the state water project, then proportionally we will carry less of the cost of the state water project. But I can't see where there's any way where we could, you know, opt out, where, our, where we already have a baseline amount of water and you only have to pay for the extra. The, the cost will be blended in yeah, across I all of the water have, use. Because I've never seen their contract with it. And she did say that every contractor's contract with the state is a little different. I mean, their, their template is a little different. And I, I just can't imagine that they can cram down a huge cost without some kind of amendment to the contract. So. And, 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 and the zone has advised us that they're going to be negotiating an amendment with, uh, with the Department of Water Resources. And they'll be asking for us for uh, comments on that. And in fact, the zone may very well require amendments to our contracts with them to help uh, implement that. So, so that's something that the board will be discussing again. And I don't know the exact timeline, but probably within the next year, uh, they'll be renegotiating their contract with DWR and and that may have ripple through effects on our water supply contracts for the retailers. Okay, uh, I have, did she say that it had to be unanimous? No. It doesn't have to be unanimous. Well, that's, that's the, where it got very confusing. Yes, she talked because, about some weighted voting because versus. Because Matt, Westlands, and Kern yeah, supposedly so have 75% of it or 66% of it. Mm -hmm and then the little guys like us have the balance. If they vote based on, are they going to vote? Well, you know what would be really helpful? And I, I don't know that it's, it's, it's a vote so much as it's just a cost of delivering the water. And as stakeholders, they'll want to know that a majority of the stakeholders are still supportive of the project. But then the cost for that project will probably be passed through just in the cost of the water. So the more water you use, you carry a greater percentage and a lesser amount, you carry a smaller percentage. But see, you just said majority, which to me means that it would be easy for men to say yes and drag the rest of us kicking and screaming because they're around or over 50%. Well, there, there is you know, still a potential for a political process to, to play beyond. And, and, and uh, the California Water Fix has uh, many enemies and the number of friends I count on my fingers and, and toes. And lots of names, too. Yeah. That's confusing um, some more. You know, I, I even saw in the paper uh, uh, on the weekend a couple weeks ago, and I, I choked on my Wheaties in the morning, where one of our local legislatures is uh, signed on, not as a supporter, but as a co-sponsor of a state bill that would mandate the California Water Fix would need voter approval. So the law of the California, California Water Fix would would change, and, and I've been trying to grab the attention of people in that representative's office and, and explain that, you know, this constituency or this part of that person's constituency uh, can really use um, some of the water from the from the state water fix. So, you know, even a local legislator, you know, it's not in the pro column. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm well aware of that, and it's because They've been getting so many mixed messages. I mean, I talked to Catherine Baker just last week, and she hears different things, you know, and, and of course she covers herself as she speaks, making sure she's not saying something that I'm gonna jump off the cliff over. But I don't think they completely, anyone up there completely understands what this means. So part of the, the, the fundamental problem we're facing is there are some water agencies who got their tunnels built back in the day. And uh, they've got theirs, and they've got their water rates, rights, and they've got the water system working just fine for them. And uh, any late arrivals at the table, they're not supportive of. And, and they advocate aggressively for their interest. And yet, um, you know, there's no agencies in the Tri-Valley that have yet stepped up and said, we are supportive of the California water fix. So you know, kind of by a uh, situation of silence on one side of the argument and very aggressive um, uh, lobbying on the other side, the story has been rather one-sided. Mm -hmm. The zone isn't even yet officially for another 24 hours or so on board supporting the California water fix. Before, before, before would we, I'd be more comfortable before this body went publicly with some more factual information. It, provided by like Mr. Matt, you know, somebody could just give me the rules of the road of how the 
as the AP actually works. You know, you know, and I know some of it's from the political crystal ball, but Bob's actually pretty good at that. Um, I think he likes it. <laughs> but, just, but just the presentation on, on, you know, these are the agencies, this is how it works, they allocate the water this way. If they, if they want to make any big changes to the way the SWP works, this is the only way it can happen, or never one of three. But just some idea about what's going on that's more than the brochures that I've been given saying, you kind of support this or the other way down the water. And, and Bob did offer to come and we wanted to kind of hone in what you wanted to look at so he can, you know, come yeah, prepared. So that's a great way of. <coughs> Uh, giving that feedback to Bob, yeah. and trying to arrange a day where he can come. Plus, you like it. It would be, be, be a pleasurable task. For him. You want to get it. And I'd like to know if they're just putting tunnels in. Where do, where's the extra water we're going to get? Is it going to not filter through the delta anymore? So, what do the fish get? It's not. So, so is it going to increase water supply? Right. So yeah, but supposedly oh, we're going to get more water. So, so we're going to get more water in certain years where we get in a jam. In an average year, you know, it's going to be the same. But in a 2014, uh, well, maybe not in 2014, but, but in some of the other drought years um, where there are environmental considerations, we'll be able to receive some water supply where we receive a restricted flow in some years because of environmental issues in, in the Delta. But it's not, there's not, it's not really extra more water. In certain critical years, it's more water. It's, it's more of the water to which we're contractually entitled, but unable to get. Well, that's the same. So like in 14, where right here, when you shut down, maybe you wouldn't have yeah, got some more water for the allocation. Yes. Yeah, the pipe doesn't get any bigger. The valve just doesn't close far enough <coughs> as much. Yeah, yeah. One of the things that will happen is all the fish won't uh, be, uh, it won't be an issue with fish at the pumps. Uh, yeah. Uh, that, that, this is a way of avoiding that. There's, there's, there's counter, there, there's you know, uh, the impacts on water quality. So I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a, oh, lot of, a lot of moving pieces. I understand but you, the fish. You have a, you, with the fish, you're, you're, you're going a long ways to solve that problem. Yeah. And that's where a lot of the focus has been in terms of restrictions has been on what's happening with the fish. So if you can figure, if there's a way to get water that doesn't impact the fish uh, as much, then there's going to be more water available. The peripheral but, canal. Well, there's, there's <laughs> that, and there's the politics from the peripheral canal, and there's a lot <laughs> swirling around politically. There's <laughs> questions of how would this be operated, what would happen to water quality, that's why people are, you know, a lot, a lot of uh, Agencies and folks in the Delta are very concerned. It's, you know, there's a lot of moving parts. And I don't feel like we've gotten straight answers from anybody, uh, no matter how many brochures, as, as Rich says, and, and how many people at the shop. I don't think we've gotten straight answers. You read on the political aspect of it, given the fact that the government's been pushing so hard for the Twin Tunnels. Um, if you look at the track record of the, uh, the SP Rail, the news pick up Fresno B, and there's just an article after article after article on the tens of millions of increase in cost. I sure as heck wouldn't bank on this $472 uh, additional charge as being that when we get there. I mean, it's just, they don't have a good record for managing costs. So, I got you. I think the presentation on that. Take the railroad money and put it into work. Go right around the railroad through the tunnels with the walk in. Well, I told you two years ago that you already authorized the contract for the preliminary design, yeah. conceptual design. Yeah, that the environmental works not even done. So. All right, any other questions? We'll wrap up H here and move on to the report. Okay. Item I. Okay, this is approved side letter agreements. So, <coughs> you have in front of you three side letter agreements. Uh, one from Hebu, uh, the main managers group, Hebu, the professional employees group, and Sibu, which is the confidential employee group. It extends their term one year. Uh, you'll notice Hebu has a different termination date. 
there would be a combination date going into it, but they all have extended, uh, approved extending for one year. So it's here for your approval. It's the inside the authority table. So we ask you to approve it. I'd like to personally thank the groups that agreed to this for their flexibility. This really helps me out a lot of moving parts in 2016. And having some less moving parts is always good. Uh, so I'll move for what's presented. And we've been seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Time for board member items. Uh, I have a question. I don't know if it's coming in. Oh, okay. Here or, but, and John, I'm just curious as to why, um, if you know a reason why East Bay Money is not uh, willing to work with us at this juncture regarding well, The way it was explained to me is that East Bay Money can work with us. Transfer. They have available capacity in their system that they're not using. Uh, last year, when we were trying to do a wire transfer, they did have available capacity. In fact, this time last year, they weren't even planning on operating the for themselves. Of course, as the spring of 2015 progressed, they changed that and started running the board, and they ran it all summer long. I think it's still running. But, uh, now where they're at is looking into 2016, the McCollumy system is so depleted uh, that they say they're going to need 100% of the capacity of Freeport just to serve these business customers. So they don't have any excess capacity left to work with us to help us with no water transfer. And two other things, I guess Bob Battle, they have it as a board item coming up talking about that at their board meeting. Specifically, what Dan's talking about. But they also reached out and committed to us that they are interested in working with us when they can. So it's not a matter of no, never, it's just this year, it's not good. They really, they really need the water there, but the residents don't go. It's probably more than. Then they would come back? Yeah, it, it, it did come back. Yeah, they just, they're, they're out to get the transfer water everywhere. They're, 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 they need, uh, need a lot of water transfer water and they've got uh, 15,025 there and they're just putting them together for a and they're going to run through three more that's basically that's the word we hear if you use the they, they did tell us that you know if El Nino brought a really wet winter they might be able to talk to us in March uh, if, if things started to loosen up a little bit I think as we all know El Nino has kind of been a so far, so uh, we really haven't gotten uh, the tremendous rain that we were hoping for. Thank you. Any uh, other items? Right. Uh, board meeting? Um, yeah, I attended the uh, Executive Committee board meeting for the Alameda County Special Districts um, chapter last week. Um, as you know, um, we have Eric locked in. <laughs> as much as you can lock in a congressman for our dinner speaker on March 24th, though we should be getting we should be getting those save the dates and um, the invitations very shortly. Um, Stacy just had final pieces to put in it, and then on our May 11th meeting, um, it's going to be at East Bay Regional Park, and we've gotten San Francisco Bay Restoration Authority to come and speak to us at that meeting. So if you're interested in the kinds of things that might happen with our outfalls and the regulations, that would probably be a good meeting to attend. Um, let's see, that's probably, oh, we're going to be receiving um, letters from ACSD regarding the designated voter. They're running into the same problem that the CASA did, the bylaws say the voting member needs to be the designated delegate, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to be getting one of those letters um, pretty soon. <laughs> and um, I think that's it. 
Don't forget we need to bring a door prize to the dinner. Huh? March 24th. Can you hear me? Because <laughs> we don't do it. <laughs> I think Nancy used to do it, actually. Maybe Bert did, but anyway. Oh, you did. Okay. Sue. <laughs> Glad you're still here, Sue. I also volunteered. I don't know if you've heard from them yet. I also volunteered Joyce to be a photographer for the night. Yeah, that might not work. <laughs> okay, that's all I have. Rich, you Neither do I. Um, let's see. Now this time to go into closed session uh, as left. We have two closed sessions this evening. Item 11A is no longer needed, and so we'll be going into closed sessions for item 11 B and C, as described on the agenda. At this time, the broadcast will be stopped since we anticipate having to report out of closed session. But should something be out of, reported out of closed session reportage, um, the district secretary will have that information. So thank you and good evening. Yeah. 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 This is water.